Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a pretty controlling black-white mid-range deck that has a little bit of a token sub-theme as well as a life gain and drain theme which helps set up our gumdrop poisoner which is one of the build around cards here. A 3 mana 3-2 three can first tempt with treats making a food token at instant speed for single black and then later play a 3-2 lifelink when it enters the battlefield up to one creature gets minus x minus x until a turn where x is the amount of life we gained this turn. And poisoner is the perfect follow-up to a turn 2 Life of Toshiro Umezawa can start out by maybe taking out a 1 toughness creature or we can simply gain 2 life then on the following turn gain 2 life once again which sets up our poisoner to give minus 2 minus 2 to an opposing creature so that can be awesome when facing mono red aggro as we now not only gain a bit of life back but immediately take out an opposing creature and present a 3 2 life link that can gain even more life and then later in the game there's plenty of ways to enable poisoner to even take out larger creatures we can sack the food token to gain three, Shieldred can gain us two in our draw step, then there's Wandering Emperor, we've got Kaya, even our creature land, Restless Fortress can gain two, so plenty of ways to enable Poisoner. Also quite good in multiples since if we attack with the first one we gain three to set up the second copy. So Poisoner has been pretty good for me in this creature aggro meta. And then of course Life of Toshiro can also be quite nice when facing one toughness creatures if we can take out a few of them. Otherwise still a nice source of life gain. Eventually transforms into Memory of Toshiro, a 2-3 that can also tap to help cast our instants and sorceries. And we've got quite a few black removal spells that Memory of Toshiro can help cast. Cut down at 1 mana. And then at 2 mana we've got a mix with Go for the Throat, Shieldred's Edict giving us a few more answers to opposing Planeswalkers. And then a Destroy Evil can take out opposing enchantments, especially relevant when the opponent has a bunch of removal like Ossification or Leyline Binding, so we can free or shield it, can take out opposing copies of shield it, destroying creatures with toughness 4 or greater, and even against mono red aggro it's not a dead card since we can still take out maybe a Godric after it got plus 1 plus 1, and can also take out an etching of Kumano. So Destroy Evil has been a pretty nice one-off to have in these controlling decks. And then at 3 mana, of course, the full set of Wedding Announcements, still one of the best cards in Standard, pumping out tokens that can draw us more cards and eventually giving the team a plus 1 plus 1. Then we've got two copies of Rowan's Grim Surge, which is pretty good for a black card draw effect. Of course, we don't get the same card draw that a blue control deck would get, but Grim Surge can easily sacrifice a food token from Poisoner, maybe a 1 1 token from Wedding Announcement after it's jump blocked, and that way we get to dig pretty deep to find more answers or more threats depending on the matchup. And if we have a shield written plate can also gain us a bit of life bank, which is nice. And then two copies of Path of Peril, also great against those aggressive creature decks, as we can cast it for three mana. And then later we can also cleave it for six total to take out larger creatures. And then we've got some of the best four drops in standard, Wandering Emperor in white and Shieldred in black. These don't really need an introduction. And then at five mana, two copies of Sunfall as another sweeper, exiling creatures in the process, giving us a large incubator usually. And then Virtue of Loyalty, which also counts as a two drop, can sometimes ambush smaller creatures with a 2-2 two -two knight. And then at the enchantment, can also help grow the team, especially nice with our tokens from Wedding Announcement, and also eventually with our Creature Land, Restless Fortress, which can also help close out the game once we've cleared all opposing threats. And then we've got some more Planeswalkers to top off our curve. Eternal Wanderer can make 2-2 two -two Double Striking Samurai, can also give us a pseudo sweeper effect, and then can also potentially flicker creatures or artifacts. And then a Kaya can also be quite nice when exiling larger creatures that have powerful ETB effects, and can also draw us additional cards or drain the opponent, which will also set up our Gumdrop Poisoner. And then our mana base has a few goodies for copies of Restless Fortress, of course. And then one Mirex, which can also make more tokens to go with our wedding announcement and our Virtue of Loyalty. And then we've got the Channel Lands for a bit of added interaction. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Double Poisoner plays well with each other. Opponent on Mono Black with turn 1 Evolved Sleeper. Okay. A wedding announcement could also come in handy. So we've got a few options here in the following turns. For now, take two. Our opponent will get to attack with a sleeper and can't really block with our 2 2 token since they can make it into a 3 3. So let's just pass a turn. Possible they play something main phase and then we get to ambush sleeper but wasn't counting on it. So we'll take four here. I 
And a Flash Gorger is next, so our 2-2 two -two is not going to get to attack. I probably still play the Poisoner to set up the second Poisoner to maybe take out a creature. And next turn I can both Adventure and play Poisoner. And Liliana can make a sacrifice as a Knight token. You go. And just Flash Gorger attacking. Okay, so Poisoner goes after Liliana, opponent probably blocks with Conscript, and then we can play second Poisoner to finish off Flash Gorger after making another food. Seems okay. And then next turn, maybe go for Virtue, or we can just gain three, play Wedding Announcement. What to discard here is also an interesting question. Getting to seven mana for Kaya is going to be tricky. So I might just have to let that go. Even though it would be awesome once we can actually cast it. Yeah, let's see. Opponents probably doesn't want to trade Sleeper for Poisoner. So I will get to finish off Liliana with the Poisoner, unless they've got another blocker here. And then I would get to play Wedding Announcements, play Mirax. Maybe I'll hang on to Kaya for another turn and discard a Ganjo. My opponent did have another Sleeper, which can now maybe chump. And Shieldroth was an excellent draw. Although if Poisoner ends up trading, then of course Liliana could minus, so then we have to go with a different approach. Right, opponent chumps. So we could still try Shieldred, which would also punish the extra card draw from Lord Skitter's Blessing. But of course, if they have another removal spell within their next couple draws, they could essentially clear my board. I don't think Virtue of Loyalty is the way to go. So, yeah, maybe still go for Shieldred here over Wedding Announcement. Opponent did have a go for the throat as her last card, unfortunately. Okay. Liana is gonna minus finish off Poisoner. So if we find removal for Sleeper, we're not in terrible shape since we can still pull ahead with Wedding Announcement. But no removal so far. Yeah, let's get the Wedding Announcement going then over Virtue. Can gain a bit of life back here. And then we're just one land away from Kaya. Four mana, could see an opposing shielded now. We'll take the hit. Opponent actually levels up, so no shielded at least. Keeping one food in case we top deck another Poisoner could be nice. And there's a land. Okay, so now we can actually play Kaya, Exile Evolved Sleeper. And then we can potentially use the various abilities at some point. Looks like a cut down. Gonna take care of their own sleeper token. Okay, still trigger announcement. And this Virtue of Loyalty is gonna be a nice way to grow the team. Creature lands good too. So we can start drawing or we can drain. Uh, I think we prefer drawing. Gotta think on my feet. 
attack for two, play Fortress. And then Wedding Announcement will draw as well. Opponent did wait for us to attack to cast Cut Down. So we will draw with the Announcement, but maybe that's what they preferred. So yeah, we're definitely ahead now. We've got a lot more mana to work with, multiple enchantments, providing value turn after turn. And even though we've got 9 life, we've got plenty of ways to gain more if needed. And our opponent explodes, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Turn 1 to red-black. And a scamp. So we could cut it down, or I can wait for Life of Toshiro to give it minus one, minus one, and play tapped line for now. Yeah, I think that's better. Even though we have multiple one drops we could play on turn one, it seems more important to curve two drop into three drop, in case we don't find any more untapped lands. Okay, Hex Mage enchants the scamp, so still a one one. And then Life of Toshiro. Probably take out the Enchanted Scamp in case they have Braids to sacrifice the Enchantment, for instance. And then Scamp also doesn't deal any damage since it got minus one, minus one. So this is kind of the perfect answer. Next turn I can gain two and then play Poisoner to take out Hex Mage. And a Swiss Pierce, her opponent's down to one card in hand. And it looks like it's another one drop. Monstrous Rage replaces the roll. Alright, so this was an incredibly aggressive start. But I think we'll be able to keep up. Scam pull, sack itself to deal four damage. Actually would have been somewhat effective for them to proliferate to deny me gaining life here and setting up the Poisoner play, but of course our opponent doesn't know that. And then now Poisoner can hopefully trade for Hex Mage. And our opponent explodes, yeah, turn 2 Life of Toshiro, turn 3 Poisoner is all we needed here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Up against a green whites turn one scroll could be enchantments could be some other aggro deck life of Toshiro a pretty nice answer to scroll giving it minus one minus one could of course also just be green white poison but yeah looks like enchantments so destroy evil can destroy an enchantment but we have to start with scroll Opponent will get to have a pretty explosive turn here, but hopefully we can catch back up with our spot removal. Visitor is going to need a plus one counter to survive Life of the Shiro. Audacity on Naturalists. Alright, opponent's putting another counter on Naturalists, so they must have another enchantment here, Reign of Truth. And now Visitor counter on itself to get out of range. Alright, so good news is we can deal with both of the opponent's creatures regardless. So now may as well gain two life. And then we've got cut down for visitor, destroy evil for naturalist. Don't think there's a real reason to wait on the off chance that our opponent has a protection spell. Okay, so clear board, pretty much. Reign of Truth, second chapter doesn't do anything. And next turn we can play Shieldred. Opponent probably has an ossification in hand since they didn't do anything here. So instead of playing Shieldred into it, we can maybe get our announcement going. And then Cutdown might be able to answer Portrait of Michiko.
Could also keep cut down to answer a Calyx before it puts a plus one counter on itself, which is also reasonable here. Since even if the ossification portraits a 2-2, I can still block it pretty easily. And Calyx getting out of hand is one way of losing the game. Okay, now we can play Shieldreds. And then with Memory of Toshiro, we would also technically still have access to cut down if we didn't draw the land. But now I think I'm happy to attack with both, so we draw a card. And then next turn, Eternal Wanderer is available. Salsification, my shield would probably cut down Portrait in response. And then we can just make a bunch of double striking samurai that will eventually get pumped. Poisoner can also be a nice way to take out an opposing creature. can make a food, sack it, and play Poisoner all in the same turn. And double Poisoner is excellent. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got our early interaction for aggro decks. A Reckoner Raid certainly points towards a more aggressive black deck. A red black it is, and a hopeless nightmare. Got plenty of lands we can discard. And another one. Okay, now maybe get rid of a cut down, play Life of Toshiro to gain two next turn. Or I can hang on to cut down to answer the 2 2 captain. Hmm, close call. I guess we'd rather cut down the 2 2 and then discard Life of Toshiro. And hang on to lands plus Wandering Emperor. Found another life of Toshiro, now we can play it. Opponent passes. And we'll gain two once again. And then pass, in case we need to take out a hasty creature like Squee. Our opponent's cries with Hopeless Nightmare. Keeps one on top. And then now we can cut down the Captain. Small chance our opponent's playing with Monstrous Rage and they could have punished us here. Braids is next, can sack the enchantments, I can do the same. Which I guess I don't mind, since a 2-3 doesn't do all that much for me. And then next turn we have Wandering Emperor to answer Braids. Shieldred now in option 2. Alright, fine. Small chance our opponent would play around a Wandering Emperor. Whereas now if they remove Shieldred, they're definitely attacking, and we can always main phase Emperor to exile Braids. And Braids is going to be quite painful if they can't remove Shieldred. Kumano is next. Would be a great way to finish off a Planeswalker. And a Crucible making some 1-1s. One okay, so opponent's going to probably just sack a token here. And we'll pass with Emperor and cut down available unless we want to attack. Yeah, I guess with our opponent at 16, maybe that's not so crazy. Opponent actually jumps. And this opens up Braids to attack and run into our Wandering Emperor. They probably have a backup of Braids in hand by now. Alright, let's see what's next. You're done. It's gonna be a Harvester, which dodges cut down now that it has a plus one counter from Kumano, but can still attack into it with Shieldred. And then cut down can answer the etching. 
Another Emperor means I'm more likely to want to make a token now. Back to wandering. There is a chance your opponent has some burn spell in hand and they can now block shield root and finish it off. I think that's still okay. That would have been a reason to go for a plus one at first strike. Opponent falls to ten, down to eight after their draw step. Ooh, Twisted Fealty. Okay, so if they can steal Shieldred and then finish it off with some Sacrifice effect, that would be bad. Could cut down the Etching here. And then they don't get the Wicked Roll. Yeah, that's probably a fine use of our mana. As opposed to waiting for Wandering Emperor to exile something. This doesn't fizzle Twisted Fealty since it still has two separate targets. So we'll see what happens. Just take eight. If they have the removal spell, I would have been better off uh, maybe chumping with a token. It looks like a callous cell sword could have also dealt damage upstairs. But there are some one mana sorceries in blank that sack a creature and then can finish off something else, which could have been a good reason to chum block the uh, harvester or shield it. Okay, now we can main phase Emperor Exile Harvester if we'd like, which I don't mind. And then, yeah, as the dust settles, our opponent's not that far behind. We've got a creature land and a sunfall and a bit more life to work with. But that Twisted Fealty plus a Sacrifice effect certainly helped. Would have been even more effective with Braids alongside it. So they probably drew it pretty recently. Another Emperor. Okay, we have options, including Animate Fortress, put a counter on it to attack past the Cell Sword would be hitting for four total. And then they can finish off Emperor on the way back. I think I prefer just making a token and keeping up another Wandering Emperor at that point. Or we could attack with Fortress to get two damage across which is also reasonable. And our opponent explodes. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Kind of a tokens draw virtue into wedding announcements. Could be pretty effective in some matchups. Turn one, hopeful initiate, so white aggro. Okay, so Thalia can potentially slow us down a bit. It's gonna be an intrepid adversary, so if initiate attacks, we can actually ambush it with our knight. And uh, yeah, opponent doesn't respect it here, so that's perfect. Life of Toshiro, probably too good to pass up here to take out Adversary. Although Wedding Announcement would also be pretty nice. Yeah, for opponent can grow the Adversary somehow, maybe with a Spellbook Vendor. I might regret not going for Life of Toshiro. Attack for two. Can now answer Thalia as well. This is going to be Brule Cathar take out our token. That's pretty good. So we can gain two instead. And then... Don't mind playing Shield Road here. Force them to have another Brule Cathar. And if they do, can maybe set up our Sunfall to get it back. Ossification instead. All right, that's a better answer. Zero point still in the game. Spellbook Vendor, so yeah, they could have potentially grown the Adversary. Now we've got Land for Sunfall. Could also let them overextend into it and just play Virtue of Loyalty for now. Thalia could 
potentially prevent us from casting it, but then we've got other plays available. Another Brutal Cathar, alright. So now Sunfall looks pretty good. Our opponent did keep on top. Can gain two. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Turn one, probably go for Tapped Fortress. And then turn two, we can always cut down and make a food. And then Poisoner can also be pretty decent in multiples. Our hand definitely more geared towards beating aggro decks as opposed to control. Turn one, Swamp. And Skull Dweller, so maybe a Poison or a Proliferate deck. Okay. Don't mind using Cutdown here on the Skull Dweller. But we'll wait and see. Black Green. So it could be kind of an Abzan Toxic deck. Now the token from Wedding Announcement also lines up against a 1-1 Death Touch. But still want to spend my mana and try to deny the initial poison so they can't proliferate it either. Blind Belly Rats. Proliferates when it dies, so if I just play a Poisoner here, I could technically trade for it. And if it survives, I could maybe attack and then play another Poisoner next turn. So we'll see. A rat attacks. Yeah, I mean, blocking now is still reasonable. Then next turn we can Wedding Announcement, make a food, turn after, sack of food, play Poisoner, take something out. Just denying that initial poison could make quite the difference. Contaminator, that one's a bit too big for me to block, but now Edict to the rescue. That lines up perfectly. Cast it now. And then we'll be making another food, I think. So next turn I have the option of sacking a food, playing Poisoner. And take out another rat, for instance. Okay, and then Wedding Announcement to block the Skull Dweller. Drown an Icker, also doesn't get to proliferate any poison. And they finally get to deal their first point here. Communion. We'll get this Cold Waller back. But now hopefully we can block it with our Wedding Announcement tokens. Yeah, I think that's the play over trying to animate Fortress, which would play around another Drown and Icker, admittedly. But need to get this going. And then I hang on to my food to combine with another Poisoner. Don't really care about getting three in this matchup. Another Skull Dweller, so yeah, can trade. Next turn have another token. And a Life of Toshiro can also finish off the Skull Dwellers. So... With the Communion they will get their creature back but it avoids the scenario where they can give it evasion and then apply even more poison with the enchantment, so I think this is safer. And then I can channel Abandonmire to get Poisoner back. Shielded, also an option. But honestly, I think I prefer Poisoner here. And then take out another Skull Dweller. Could have also gained Suit to set up Poisoner, but we've got a food token, so there's no need. So sank the food. Can adventure first as well. And we can start attacking to draw with Wedding Announcements. And now we're going to close out the game pretty quickly. The random creature we get from Life of Toshiro also can apply meaningful pressure combined with our Anthem effects. OK, 
the opponent had a rock priest and with a communion to protect it. But we can just kind of outrace it here. Also would have been reasonable to get in with a restless fortress. Can keep it back as an extra blocker. And then next turn present lethal. Siphoner has flying. And then we can go for the throw at one of their two creatures. I guess uh, the Rot Priest does come back to play right away. So might have been better off taking out the Siphoner instead to guarantee lethal. But now they would have to double chum block to survive. So either way works. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Bit of removal, some nice powerful individual cards here. Up against the red. Not the best hand for red aggro, but being on the play helps. And now Shieldred as well. So probably gonna edict the Swiss Spear. Adversaries next. I mean, I guess we can let them decide, but giving the opponent a choice is usually not the way to go. So make them sacrifice a non-token creature. I think on average they would probably sack Swiss Spear if I gave them the choice, but there's a tiny chance that they have a bunch of ways to enable prowess and Swiss Spear would be better, so may as well take away the choice from the opponent. And then more mana efficient here is Wedding Announcements. Hope to play Shieldred and then Grim Surge, so we gain extra life. Could also play Wandering Emperor first, another Shieldred, but we're missing the land. So now I'm tempted to chum block with the token and cast Grim Surge. Or we can play Life of Toshiro to just gain two, which is also fine. Not quite as exciting and is not guaranteed to get me 4 mana for Shieldred or Emperor. But it is less drastic than sacking a creature when we're about to give the team plus 1 plus 1. So if opponent attacks all out, Monstrous Rage would be the main concern. I think we still take it, so we can gain 2 more next turn. And it's going to be a Kumano. And I go for the throats. Alright, so we can gain two once again. Pass, make a token, grow the team. And then we can punish a monstrous rage with go for the throat at least. So happy to block both. May as well double block one in case you have double monstrous rage. Okay. And our opponent explodes. Don't even have to show the more powerful four drops. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems pretty decent. Turn one, adventure poisoner. Turn two, make a knight against blue-whites could be a more controlling deck, in which case it's good that we don't have too much spot removal in hand. Uh, I might actually main phase this to play around a counter spell. And yeah, it looks like Esper control potentially. So we'll attack and then could play Poisoner, could hope to resolve Wedding Announcements, although counter spell seems likely. So I think I go for Poisoner instead. It's open information, and this can also set up our second Poisoner if we need to take out a creature after all. And then we can maybe draw with Announcement right away if we resolve it. So let's attack all out. Sadly, don't have double Y to keep up Wandering Emperor, which might have been the play otherwise to play around a counterspell. 
Don't really want to get my announcements countered by Make Disappear. So do I just adventure and play another Poisoner then? And hope they don't have a 4 or 5 mana Sweeper. Or play Announcements, potentially get it countered. What does our next turn look like? Depends if we draw land or not, especially planes would help. It's kind of a tricky spot. I think I should play the Wedding Announcement still. Because if it does actually resolve, we're in pretty good shape. They could still have a Void Rent to take it out. Looks like it. Okay. Not much we can do about that one. Revelry is pretty decent. Make two one ones and gain four. Now Life of Toshiro can take out one of the tokens, allowing us to keep attacking. And it doesn't overextend as much as playing another Poisoner into a potential uh, Sunfall. So this is good. Found a Fortress. Creature lands are also good against Control. So all in all, can't complain about my draw for the matchup, but I think it's still an unfavorable matchup overall. Next turn we can try Virtue of Loyalty. Or end of turn Wandering Emperor to keep up the pressure if there is a Sweeper. The Fairies next, at least we should be able to pressure that one. Pun goes digging for a Sweeper. So the easiest thing to do here, probably a Life of Toshiro, minus one, minus one. Then one Knight could suffice to take out the Fairy. Could also gain to play another Poisoner to finish off the token, but then we're maybe overextending a bit. Could still play around Cutdown and send both creatures at Teferi, but giving up the damage seems pretty relevant. And I guess I could still flash an Emperor to save my creature from a Cutdown. So we'll try this approach. You could also have a march for x equals zero to exile the knights, which Emperor doesn't help against. So maybe that's still a reason to send Poisoner at Teferi, give up on one damage. Right, that seems to work. So now Emperor versus Virtue of Loyalty is the question. So we play Virtue, opponent cast Sunfall, we untap, play Shieldred. Yeah, that's pretty good. Whereas they may not feel inclined to cast a Sweeper. If we don't go for Virtue here, they might be able to get by with some spot removal instead. And then having them cast a Sweeper now could also be better if uh, we still get our Life of Toshiro. But of course, Farewell exiling everything is pretty punishing. So both our enchantments are gone. Let's see if Shieldred can stick around. Might be removed before draw step, at least the drains for two it seems. And now an opposing Wandering Emperor is certainly on our radar. Problem is if our opponent has something like a Memory Deluge, they can just uh, draw into more answers if we don't force them to have removal here. But I think I should still go for a line where we don't attack with Shieldred if possible. In which case, I can just play a Life of Toshiro and then end of turn play Emperor, or we can attack with a Restless Fortress, have them exile that with Emperor instead. Still not amazing. So yeah, let's try a Life plus Emperor. Can uh, pump Shieldred here, but I don't think we'll be attacking with it anyways. Although gaining two is probably not going to make a difference either in this matchup. Yeah, let's just pass. Opponent cycles Rafine's Tower. Okay, that's promising. Drains with Shieldred. And they had a Wandering Emperor. So, could be tempted to play our own Emperor while the opponent's tapped out. I'm home. Opponent's gonna make a Samurai. May your blade strike. So what happens if I play Emperor? Can make a token. Opponent can grow their token. Shieldred can probably still block. If they have another Sweeper, I guess I wouldn't want to play Emperor here, so I'll wait. 
Boon is down to four. Boon makes another token, so Sweeper doesn't seem super likely anymore. And now the extra life loss from Fortress is going to be quite relevant. But they could easily have another Wandering Emperor in hand, of course, to gain life. So we'll grow the Samurai. Since that can attack without enabling Wandering Emperor. And then now Poisoner can finish off a Samurai as well. So that's pretty good. And then I don't think we're attacking with Fortress to play around another Emperor. And then I probably just go for a plus to play around a Sweeper now. Counter on Poisoner versus Counter on Samurai, which your opponent has to block anyways. I guess they could double block with another Emperor making a Samurai. So sure. Also plays around Aigancho dealing 4 damage. So just send the Samurai. And we should go face at this point. Opponent jumps. Okay, so Shield Roots potentially puts him to 2, and then an attack from Fortress could be lethal. And our opponent explodes, awesome! Can't stress enough that this is a pretty bad matchup, so we got quite lucky to win this one. And yeah, we didn't draw much spot removal, which is part of the reason why. If our hand has a bunch of go for the throats and cutdowns, then uh, our hand doesn't line up all that well. But we had a pretty threat dense hand and managed to even uh, beat a farewell, exiling a lot of our stuff. So yeah, overall, quite satisfied with how this black-white mid-range deck performed. Poisoner plus Life of Toshiro is one of my favorite two-card combos in standard now, when facing those aggressive red decks, especially being able to gain life while affecting the board and removing a creature is awesome indeed. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.